Good morning boys and girls from Pilgrim and any friends and family that might be tuning in today. I'm going to do um, a very famous Earth Day favourite story that uh, written by Dr Seuss in the 1970s to help us think about deforestation which is a big word that means please stop cutting down all the trees. I have two other books I'm going to share over the next few days in honour of Earth Day also. written. One was written around the same time about pollution and not taking care of the planet by Bill Peat. That's called The Wump World. And a more recent one by Graham Bass called Uno's Garden. This one is Uno's Garden by Graham Bass. Here is The Wump World by Bill Peat. Again, this one was written about the same time. Wump World is from 1970. And it's very similar about pollution and taking care of the planet and recycling. And the Lorax obviously was written, let's check the date on that one, in 1971 originally. Of course, it's made famous now by a movie. So I'm going to read the Lorax today. I have two friends sitting in over there, turtles. Turtles are endangered and have to be protected also. We have to take care of everything, boys and girls. So April 22nd is Earth Day. I'm not going to be there to share them in person, so I'm going to start with the Lorax. The Lorax by Dr. Seuss from 1971, copyright, published by Random House, New York. Here's our title page. He is in the Truffula Tree. At the far end of town where the crickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing, excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could, before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax, and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunzler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Wunzler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkim on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkim cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes out of miff muffed moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters. And sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snub his secret strange hole in his grubulous glove. Then he grunts, I'll call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Slap! Down slups the whisper my phone to your ear, and the old Wunzler's whispers are not very clear, since they have to come down through a snurgly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding grey, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back. Such a long, long time back.
Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swami swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright coloured tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown barber lutes frisking about in their barber suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees all my life I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down the truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a thneed. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of the stump. The tree I chopped down was sort of a man. Describe him? Mm, that's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mr. He said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffula tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed's a fine something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool thneed. But the very next minute I proved he was wrong, for just at that minute a chap came along and he thought that the thneed I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for 3 98 I laughed at the Lorax. <laughs> you poor stupid guy, you never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole once the family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken. Sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, 
in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting thneeds, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of chuffula trees. Chop, you can hear it, can't you? Then, oh, baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker which whacked off four truffular trees at one smacker. We were making thneeds four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. For the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please, but I'm also in charge of the brown barber lutes who played in the shade in their barber loose suits and happily lived eating chuffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough chuffula fruit to go round. And my poor barber lutes are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the Wunsler, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business. And business must grow regardless of crummies in tummies, you know. Well, I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger. So bigger I got. I biggered my factory. I biggered my roads. I biggered my wagons. I biggered the loads of the needs I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more thneeds, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Notice how greed, the word greed, that rhymes with thneed and need. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax. <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snargled. He sniffed. Once, la, he cried with a cruffulous croak. Once, la, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And, and so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here. I am sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop making gluppity glup and shloppity shlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Wunsler man, you. Gluppity glup and shloppity shlop is like toxic waste. We can't use all that waste. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off, or their future is dreary. 
They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. Completely disgusting. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at that Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap and say bad, bad, bad bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering. Turning more truffular trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall. The very last Truffula tree of them all. Oh, that kind of makes me feel really, it makes you feel really sad. No more trees. No more trees, no more thneeds, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all oh, waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smuggered stars. Now all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. A tiny bit of blue sky out the other side. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word unless. Whatever that meant, well I just couldn't guess. That was long long ago but each day since that day I've sat here and worried and worried away through the years while my buildings have fallen apart. I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now says the onceler. Now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula trees, seeds and truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula. Treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect it from axes that hack, then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. And that's the end. So you, we, all of us are in charge now of keeping the planet clean and not letting people cut down too many trees and 
that's happening all over the world. So I want you to think about that for a minute. Also, I remember um, when I was reading the story, I forgot to mention it, that this was written in the 1970s where people still said shut up and stupid a lot um, and didn't think about it, how, how it hurt people's feelings but, that like it does now. So I didn't change any of those words because I think that it's important to remember that a book published in the 70s is a little different from what we do today. Um, so I'm going to challenge you to pilgrim students or anyone else who might want to i want you to think of a character a kind of a dr seussical name character so it can be weird and strange give it a name maybe draw the character and think about what you would like it to speak for what's your special care about the world what do you care about do you care about elephants do you care about rhinoceroses turtles a place that isn't doing so well maybe the rainforest maybe a river in a big city um think about that an animal place or a thing and i want you to say what you would speak for like the lorax but think of a different word than speak you know there are lots of synonyms for speak and there are also lots of synonyms for words that mean speaking louder like shout you know sometimes we have to speak louder to get people's attention this book got a lot of people's attention and look from in the 1970 to 2020 it is still 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 being read every earth day and lots of other times besides actually this one was 71 the bill pete one was 70. so it had an important anniversary last year didn't it how many years was that lots not quite as old as me though all right so i'm gonna sign off with the lorax and i'm going to read the Wump World and Uno's Garden in honour of Earth Day over the next few days also. If you want to tune in to those, Lorax by Dr Seuss. Happy Earth Day, everybody. <laughs>